All right, there they are, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, Chinese president, Xi Jinping, meeting in Beijing, the two of them working to strengthen ties between their governments as Russia steps up its war effort against Ukraine. China, meantime, has significantly increased oil imports from Russia, which is facing sanctions from the U.S. and, and other countries. Mark Kennedy joins us on this, former congressman from Minnesota. He's now the, um, the director of the WABA Institute for Strategic Competition at the nonpartisan Wilson Center. Welcome back uh, to the show. I think, you know, I said before the break, are these two kind of getting too close for comfort? We've been worried about that for some time. There was some reporting that they talked about some sort of a financial arrangement, maybe the, you know, some sort of a banking arrangement. As I, as I mentioned, we know about the sanctions that are already in place. I mean, how concerned should we be? Well, we should be concerned. I mean, they are working to make each of themselves sanction-proof. Yeah. Whereas uh, Russia hasn't been able to sell its oil to Europe, now it sells it to China. That makes China less dependent on others for oil. But you're right that the financial is the one area that they have not yet been able to delink from. They're doing more of their sales between each other in RMB, uh, but getting access to a banking system is something that Russia wants to do. And China is increasingly trying to make itself less dependent on the financial system that is still largely controlled by the U.S. and our Western partners. What about the timing of all of this, given what uh, has been happening here, just really in the last few days in Ukraine? Here's the headline from the Associated Press, that China and Russia are reaffirming their ties as Moscow presses its offensive um, in Ukraine. They reaffirmed, as it says at the bottom, this no-limits partnership, that it's growing deeper, both countries facing deepening tensions with the West. But we've had report after report saying that Things are not going well from Ukraine's point of view in Ukraine. The Russia is making key advances in the Kharkiv uh, region. What about the link between China and Russia and how much it might help as Russia continues that effort? It is a huge benefit. I mean, they, the goods that they've gotten from China, the dual use goods, the engines for missiles, the semiconductors for weapons, uh, Russia would not be able to have anywhere near as much strength on that offense that they're going on right now had it not been for China. And remember that China has still not yet condemned what Russia has done in Ukraine. And they're having this meeting amidst, you know, a lot of violence going on and, mm -hmm. and uh, being inflicted on Ukraine. Well, it's, kind of, it's kind of weird, isn't it, that the Ukraine wants more help from us. I know we're finally sending some weapons, but it's almost like Russia's getting more help from China. Is that fair than Ukraine's getting from the United States and all this? or? Well, uh, you'd like to think that it wasn't, but no. you're right. We've had such a long pause, but China has been resolute throughout this whole period. And from a morale perspective, that also has to weigh uh, on Ukrainians, but give a little bolstering into the step and the aggressiveness of Russia. You know, you follow China for years that the uh, anybody who follows China, they always say, oh, they're always thinking long term. There's always three points. There's always five years or more. And these all these plans. What's their strategic thinking about all of this? It just, you know, in a geopolitical sense, as they look at what's happening in Ukraine, uh, what are they thinking? Well, they're getting a lot of benefits from Russia. Number one is more supply chain resilience, whether it be access to energy energy or supply chains that aren't through the, the Southeast to Asian straits that U.S. has a lot of control over. They're also bolstering their economy. At the same mm -hmm. time, we're putting sanctions on their EVs. Sales to Russia of EVs and other consumer goods have helped them become the number one car exporter in the world. And from a security perspective, uh, they, if they did have a conflict or tensions with the U.S., they have less to worry about in their long border with Russia, and they know that Russia could probably make this a two-front effort that would distract and, and pull apart our focus on whatever yeah. China is doing. So there's a lot of benefit to China It's not gets. like we're not aware of it. I'll make this as a final point. The Secretary of State was in uh, Beijing himself last month. He, it seemed like uh, Secretary Blinken talked about, you know, a lot of what you and I are speaking about here a few weeks later. Let's listen. About the PRC providing components that are powering Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine. China's the top supplier of machine tools, microelectronics, nitrocellulose, which is critical to making munitions and rocket propellants. So there you go. Uh, final point on all of this. Are we on top of it? I know we know about it, but what can we do? Well, not much we can do because this uh, coming together of Xi and Putin is really a snub to what you just heard from Secretary Blinken, as was if you look at the European tour that just she went through, was going to the parts of Europe that are 
more likely to be receptive of not going along with the U.S. strong position on China. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.